Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is giving me another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm playing with the Metal Foes Zoo deck yet again. I absolutely love this deck. I love playing any sort of pendulum strategy, and love playing with uh, basically any deck now that can just pump out Invoker very easily. It's something that I'm really enjoying uh, playing with in general. But uh, So as you can see here, my hand isn't that optimal, but I did draw the one of Max C, which means that good shit, right? I'm such a master duelist. <laughs> Um, so I'm just deciding how I want to um, to put my scales in uh, to make it to where I'm able to pendulum summon. Now, if I had literally one more low scale, if that Bismagear or that Volflame had been a low scale, I could have put both of my Silverds in scales, popped them out, set up a full scale, and then pendulum both Silverds, and then gone into a Zoo View Substitute play to back up my uh, Max C essentially to make it to where the Max C has a lot more value. But as it stands, uh, I'm just making plays here now. I'm able to pop the Bismagear, which will get a search. Um, I'm able to just shuffle back the uh, the Metal Foes Fusion, making Mithrilium, so that it kind of pressures. Um, basically, like I I don't know what I'm like trying to go for here, but it just it pressures being something that exists alongside the multiple counters. Because if the Mithrilium dies, it's gonna special summon Bismagear back from the extra deck, and then also the counters will be able to trigger and stuff like that. So that on top of the Max C is just really pressuring for the opponent. And so I'm playing against Canadian Courage again. And he has switched back to a BA variant, but on this time he's playing with Burning Abyss Zoo. Uh, this is a deck that um, this is a deck that is actually really interesting as well because we're both playing decks that are like really heavily like floater based in a sense. I'm playing a Pendulum Engine, so my cards are essentially in essence true floaters, and his cards are BA cards in essence, being very good true floaters as well. Uh, but we're both playing decks that maximize on the rank three engine to go into the Zoo play to do the fusion substitute combo. So. He just normal summons Farfa, mills three off Dante, and passes his turn. He mills his fusion substitute, which is a bit unfortunate, but I mean, he wasn't really going to be doing any like fusion sub plays regardless. And I've got fusion substitute in my hand from the previous turn because I drew Luna Light Black Sheep off my Metal Foes fusion. But so I draw Bow Baboon for turn, and that's like insane. That's amazing. And so I draw off it, I draw Lone Fire, and I just put it back on bottom of the deck, and then use my Silver and my Scale to pop the Bow Baboon. Um, and so setting combination, using Bow Baboon's effect to summon two, I'm going to be able to cycle through with my hand. Uh, now, I already have the Lunalite Black Sheep in Grave, so there's no real reason for me to put back the Fusion Substitute, so basically what I'm just going to be doing is picking and choosing and optimizing my scales. And so, drawing Dragoons of Draconia, that's obviously going back because it can be searched off the Broad Bull during my combo, and then the steel in is getting put back because I drew Painful Decision, and Painful Decision actually helps fuel Mithrilium while also putting a scale in hand. If I wanted to, I could have searched for steel in again off of the Painful Decision because there are still two in my deck at the point where I put that one back. Uh, but so. That's just uh, that's just something to consider, but from here, I'm just able to just do things. I've got my counters live as well, so like I could just flip double counter at any point uh, when I uh, when I like pop cards and do stuff like that. So like, there's just multitudes of different play lines that I have that I have going for me, and this deck is also something I haven't cons I haven't even mentioned yet. But this deck is playing Sangan in it. This is the Metal Foes build that I'm playtesting that I'm playtesting Sangan in. So he made a quip. Canadian Courage, if you saw a little bit a little while ago when I activated the Max C, he said Max C is at one, um, and that was just like a little quip because we just we me and me and him do a lot of table talk as the terminology goes uh, when we play each other. We just like say bullshit just to like taunt um, and like just do things like that. And it's called table talk. Uh, but so my build is actually playing Triple Sangin in it, and the reason for Sangin being in the list is that when you're doing a Baba Boon play or even just any generic Metal Foes plays in general. You can normal summon Sangin, you can pop it with the scale and search for Max C. Or instead of searching Max C, you can also search a plethora of other cards as well. You can search Archimene Eccentric, you can search Bismagear, you can search Steelin, um, you can search Ghost Ogre if you play it, you can search any hand trap that you decide to play. Uh, but Sangin is able to be Pendulum Summoned, which is actually very, very important. It's very key. Uh, because you could do your Bow Baboon play or your Terra Top play with your Fusion Sub, whatever you're doing. Bow Baboon is obviously the more optimal version uh, because of the fact that you will be. Uh, You'll be uh, using Baba Boon to draw three cards and rotate out, so you'll be able to dig for the Sangin, uh, because you can draw between five and six cards, depending on if you're able to resolve Metal Foes Fusion and stuff like that. Uh, there's multiple uh, different things that go on there. But uh, <laughs> but essentially, uh, you're able to Pendulum Summon Sangin from hand after you dig for it, pop it off one of your leftover scales, and then you're just able to just do things from there. Being able to, uh, being able to uh, do your stuff to... Uh, to pop for a max C, uh, being able to pendulum Sangin. I lost my train of thought there for a second, uh, but so I'm I'm basically just going for game here. He used uh, dimensional barrier on Xyz, and uh, and I'm just able to pop a card and then just flip double counter, and then my Mithrilium is able to is able to activate 
putting a scale back in my hand because my scales have both been activated. Um, and so I'm just doing this to empty my deck because I don't really care about the Dante adding anything back and I don't really care about the Farfa uh, because of the fact that, um, that like it's not really going to do a whole lot as far as uh, how this stuff goes because I've drawn into Dimensional Barrier also so like I'm capable, I don't even think I've Pendulum Summoned this turn yet either. Um, I've, I've, uh, I've, uh, I've drawn into Dimensional Barrier and Sangin. So, at any point here, I could, if I wasn't under Dimensional Barrier, I could make Digusto Emerald as one of my plays, shuffle back Max C, and then draw it, um, basically by, a, or search it off Sangin, essentially. Um, but, from here, I'm just able to use Sangin in a different way to just search for cards. Um, and so, from here, I just use it to get Archfiend Eccentric out of back row. I've got a Dimensional Barrier that I drew in hand because I dug for it with Balbaboons and Metalfos Fusion shuffling back and stuff like that. So, I'm not even, I don't care about the fact that I didn't bounce his Dante. Um, if I had bounced his Dante with uh, Mithrilium, I'm sure it probably was game because I haven't, I don't think I'd normal summon that turn. Um, so, I could have just done, like, stuff there. Uh, so, just killing him through Dimensional fu or dimensional Barrier would have been uh, pretty alright. But, so, he goes into a zoo play. He draws his rat and he summons it. And so I just go into an Alcahis just straight away, uh, just so I can suck up his uh, his uh, Borbo because it just seems like it makes the most sense. Let's not waste the barrier, right? Let's uh, let's make him invest cards into it. That's something that I just do a lot. I just make people invest as many cards as they can before I go and do something with barrier. That's just something that I do on a regular basis. <laughs> That's just something that I do as far as technical play goes. Is just literally just hold your cards, hold them. There's no reason to like. There's no reason to draw phase the barrier or stand by phase the barrier or any point during this because he can invest more cards into his uh, situation. So I've dealt with a rat and I've dealt with a barrier and now his tiger mortar is on the board, literally doing nothing at zero defense, and he's got a tiger mortar on the board, meaning that he can't summon his BAs. So I mean, like that's just amazing. That's great, right? And so I'm able to just go into my next turn and do literally anything that I want. Um, he's at 21, so it's just really clean cut for victory here to go into Ori Halk. Uh, because I'm able to use uh, Ori Halk uh, to do double piercing over his uh, Tiger Mortar that has 400 defense. So it's it's very simple. Like, it's got a Whiptail under it, but that's not going to matter because you lose before the Whiptail activates. So, just a, a game of raw advantage being played out there. But So now, second game, he gets to start. He opens with a Terratop, which is always strong, even when it's in just BA. When it's just in regular BA, Terratop is strong, but in this deck it's even stronger because he is playing Zoo cards. He opens Terratop and Tour Guide, by the way. <laughs> we, I'm not a skilled duelist that I can open the max seat uh, two games in a row. But I do have a really strong hand with Balbaboon, multiple scales, all that sort of stuff. And so he makes double Dante and is, is basically just able to do, uh, able to do stuff. Uh, just stuff is capable of being done, like making multiple rank threes, doing things. Um, and basically being able to go into Double Dante into Invoker with a Graph and a Skarm under the Invoker. Like, I can't remember if he milled the Seer, uh, specifically, or if it was, uh, or if it was just, um, if it was something that he, uh, that he had gotten off the, um, out of, like, his hand or something. I can't remember at the time, and I probably should have paid closer attention to what he was milling watching the replay of it. Uh, but essentially, he drew a rat as well, so, like, his hand wasn't really, like, that amazing. Uh, but he is capable of doing the fusion substitute play because he has double Dante, he made Invoker, and he's actually got some really interesting fusion sub plays in this deck specifically because of the fact that his deck does make Dante, which can make Beatrice, um, is that like instead of fusion subbing with like Invoker and the Bullhorn, he could fusion sub with one of the Dantes here, specifically the one that's already milled, uh, because he's got nothing under it other than a tour guide. He could fusion sub there and make, uh, and make his Norden play, and the Dante would add back a BA, which would guarantee him being able to make Beatrice, and so that's like a really cool interaction. I'm a little bit upset that he didn't do it, because as we were playing the game, I was literally thinking this out in my head. Like, I'm, I'm repeating what I was thinking during the game. It was like, oh, this is so cool. He can go fusion sub, get rid of the Dante that he milled with, that already has Tour Guide under it, so it's worthless. He hasn't milled with the other Dante yet. He can do that, get rid of the Dante, add back Seer or Skarm or whatever, and then discard that BA for Beatrice. Uh, so, it, like, it would guarantee a Beatrice being live. Um, so, like, at this point, he's drawn two cards, he drew off Emerald and he drew off Fusion Sub, but I have no idea of knowing whether or not he had a BA in hand or not, um, be like, beforehand, because he had the one card in hand. So he could have drawn a BA off those two cards, um, and the card that he does discard is the freshest card that he drew and makes Beatrice. Uh, so I have no idea whether or not, like, he had a BA in hand or not. Like, that last card that's still in his hand, I don't know if it's a BA card um, or not, because I feel like if he hadn't had a BA card, it was definitely 100% correct to keep the Invoker and then just get rid of the Dante you milled with because it's just got Torgat under it and then you'd be able to make Beatrice over the 
other Dante once you'd already milled. But he's got an incredibly strong board here with Dryden and Beatrice, meaning that Beatrice is going to out a monster and Dryden is going to out a face up card. And then he flips over Imperial Order. So, whoa, 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 I can't even use any of my scale effects. I can't do anything about it. And I just surrender. I literally, my hand takes the L to the Imperial Order there. I cannot out Imperial Order with this hand. And I realize that. And I'm just like, because I've got to, I've got to play through Imperial Order by setting scales and just pendulum summoning Sangin and nonsense. But then at the same time, I only have the capability of pendulum summoning Sangin. <laughs> and I've got a Baoba boot on the board, and he's got the ability to far from me and Dryden man. It's like that's that's not gonna be good at all. But so I go first, and I open the max C again like a skillful duelist, <laughs> and I also have access into uh, eccentric and uh, combination straight away. So I'm able to use eccentric to pop and get a scale for what I want. So I'm debating on what scale I want. I know I need a high scale, and I'm just debating on whether or not I want Volflame or Abysma Gear, um, because I'm gonna end up. I'm going to end up popping a, uh, a card, so I end up just going for the uh, Volflame, just because it'll be more valuable to pop later on um, during my uh, during my following turns. But So I put Silvered in the scale, uh, pop it with the Volflame, put my Dragoons of Draconia in the scale, Pendulum, my Arch Phoenix Centric, and my Silvered. That gives me an Invoker, that gives me a Zodiac play. Hell yeah. And I've also, I think, got a Counter face down. I think Counter is like, I think Counter is like de facto the first card I always go for, the first card I always set. Because if I'm not able to continue my Metal Foes popping, Counter is the strongest fallback. So I believe that that's Counter set. I could just be wrong. I could have just messed up and set like something like Combination or Fusion first. But no, Combination is already gone, and that is definitely a Counter. Uh, but so from here, I'm just able to do a Fusion Substitute play, which ends me in Dryden and Emerald drawing two cards. So I've got multitudes of ways to try and claw back resources. Uh, but I also just drew the Maxi. But I also drew another card that was searchable, Dragoons of Draconia. And I drew Combination, but at least I drew Combination in conjunction with Arch Phoenix Centric. So, the clunky hands that you can get with this deck do exist, but they are something that you can, you know, deal with um, in some form of capacity. Uh, but so I draw into another Metal Foes card, I draw into another Metal Foes counter, more importantly. So now, if my Dryden gets killed, I've literally got double counter, and he only knows about one. That's super valuable. Like, having counters that your opponent doesn't know about is actually just super valuable, because they will do their best to play around as many counters as they can see even though that card is super, like, not play aroundable, Like, counter, uh, counter is one of those cards that's, like, just really powerful, specifically against, like, zoo variants and decks like, uh, like, Canadian Courages. Like, the only things that he has to bypass counter are, like, Whiptail and Farfa. And, like, that's, and, like, uh, Virgil to a lesser extent. But, like, that's not a lot of options to just prevent me from getting just raw plus twos over and over again. Because every time you resolve counter, it's just a plus one, like, over and over again. Like, it's just, it keeps happening. You just... You one for one with the counter to get a new resource, but that monster, that resource is a pendulum monster, so it's free, it's recurrable, and then uh, and then it's gonna add scales back on the next turn, so it's just free pluses every time it resolves. Uh, but so from here, he just goes Terratop into uh, into Dante under my max C, and I just go ahead and I just pop with the Dryden. Uh, there's no BAs in his graveyard. I will pop that Dante, incentivize him to special summon more, or just leave his board open. I'm perfectly fine with this entire situation as far as play goes. Uh, but so from here. I'm able to just go over my Dryden with uh, with my Tiger Mortar, use its effect to put Rat back under it, and now this would allow me to use uh, Emerald to shuffle back my uh, Dryden and make it again um, in potentiality. But uh, but so uh, what happens here is that he actually Dimensional Barriers straight out of the gate, and I'm just like he's gonna call it Seas, isn't he? But he calls Pendulum, which I actually sort of agree with. He calls Pendulum because if I can't Pendulum Summon, my Fusion Summons aren't free. So in the pure essence of theory, right, he's shutting down two parts of my deck. In the pure essence of theory, he's shutting down two mechanics and not one, getting a lot of value off that Dimensional Barrier. But at the same time, I'm able to Xyz and use my Xyz effect, so I'm able to get a free card off Emerald. I'm able to go with my Tiger Mortar into, Dry into Dryden to, you know, further just generate defenses. And it doesn't prevent me from using my Metal Foe Scales and getting my Spells and Traps out of the deck, so my counters are still both very relevant, setting face down. I just can't use counter during this turn to, like, extend my OTK reach. But I do have a Balba Boom play, which means I've got further Xyz plays that I can, you know, utilize. Uh, and just overall, it's just really, really strong um, as far as, like, what I have access to as far as plays. And I've got tons of cards in my hand that I can use. Like, I've got several Metal Foes Pendulums in my hand that I'm actually just super not against fusing with. I'm just not against fusing with them from hand at this point because at this point his field is completely open. He's already losing in card economy because my deck is more efficient at card economy than his. 
Um, and then I draw the Sangin. Like, what a goddamn great draw. I'm able to Pendulum Summon this one Sangin. If it would have been a, if it had been any other Pendulum monster in my deck, it would have also been just as good. But it's just hilarious here that it was Sangin, specifically, because I used my Mithrilium Shuffle Back two Metal Foes spells and traps. Uh, I think it was Metal Foes Fusion and Combination, um, because I want to be able to use Metal Foes Fusion again this turn. Um, and I think I'd already like shuffled it back or something. I can't remember. Either that or I just wanted to make sure I could use it extra times. And so I Pendulum Summon Sangin, use my Volflame to pop the Sangin. And then from this point, I'm able to search another Pendulum Monster, in this case, Metal Foes Stealin', meaning that I can now Metal Foes Fusion again, and I just Metal Foes Fuse for another Mithrilium. Because at this point, I've got 18, 18, 26, 26 on the board, and that is over game. That is 36 plus 26 plus 26. That is insane. Like, he, I, I, I bet that he felt really, uh, really safe Dimensional Bearing the Pendulum, and I believe that Dimensional Bearing Pendulum was probably the correct call. Uh, for the situation that he was in, but at the same time, it didn't shut down my fusion plays at all, which ultimately just meant that he was still going to lose because I just was winning in card economy. And that's something that's very interesting, is like the fact that Dimensional Barrier is in a very unfair card, but it is not by any means the be-all, end-all. It only like really shines if you have at least some semblance of a board that it's backing up. Like if you're trying to use it as like literally an upstart goblin like he just did, you could still very easily just get your shit pushed in and you could just lose in the same exact turn. So there's that to consider. But anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out the links in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to help support me directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. It also gets you access to a monthly raffle giveaway at the end of each month. So definitely check out the details of that over on Patreon itself. At the end of this month, I'm giving away a couple of these sealed boxes of uh, Duelist Saga to some people that are uh, supporting me. But if you're looking to buy or sell cards while also indirectly supporting the channel, then be sure to check out Second Chance Gaming's website, which is also linked in the description. They're a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and I'm a big fan of how they do business with what I've had to deal with so far. Their pricing and shipping are both top-notch from what I've seen. But definitely check out their site and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But other than that, that is it for this video. Again, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video. Let me know what you guys think about this uh, Sangin Metal Foes deck.